I think Nintendo's kind of been the healthier with it then, since, yeah, the Switch itself is, like, PS4 level, maybe, but, you know, that encourages, you know, that means that their games, just by virtue of that, have lower budgets and that, and, you know, just Nintendo's way of being more economical and clever with how they make games. Yeah, yeah especially kind of with... Space and budgets and that. Yeah, especially with, like, the Pokemon company and Game Freak, because, like, I mean, you look at, like, games that took place, like, early 2010s and whatnot, and... Like, games that were coming out, we had games, like, on the PS3 and PS4 that looked fucking phenomenal, even to this day. But then you also had, yeah. like, on the 3DS, we had, like, Pokemon X and Y, which looked like a late-gen PS1 game. Yeah, like, honestly, like, kind of close, they kind of, like, nearly PS2 level, honestly, which... Yeah, like, late-gen, early-gen, of... late early-gen PS2. Yeah, like, no, no, I think, like, PS2 is, like, I guess PS2 is more, like, Sun and Moon as well, because... That's kind of when they went, you know, with different, entirely different, like, look for the games as well. And Yeah. Yeah, like, for 3DS games, like, the Pokemon games on them all look really damn good. I think, I mean, yeah, like, honestly, Game Freak's main issue has been, you know, the series is, like, well, it's the most profitable media franchise in the world. It's, like, 90, like, over 90 billion, I think, or something like that. But yeah. The, the think, biggest think... issue is just, like, the fucking, like, release date to development mm -hmm. ratio. Yeah, just it's because it's such a massive company and can go on and you know everything that needs to be done with it that they need to have the stuff out on a certain time frame. But that's something that can be managed decently well, like during DS and the 3DS era. But and, yeah, and even then, okay. like I mean, even if you were to say like, oh well, I mean, it's in their contract that they have to do one a year. I mean, at this point, I feel like the Pokemon Company could negotiate something with Nintendo. Like maybe. Well, that's well, that's no, well, that's the thing, like. Like, well, I guess, like, because the Pokemon Company themselves, Nintendo own, Nintendo owns them, basically. Like, you know, it's all just... It's a big company that's made up of, like... I think it's, like, Nintendo, Game Freak, and Creatures, I want to say. Like, they all own, like, a third of the rights to Pokemon in total. And the Pokemon Company is just made as, like, the manager of the brand, basically. You know, for yeah. stuff like merchandise, trading cards, the anime, shit like that. Yeah. But at least, like, the devs, I mean, like, the, the fucking developers for Pokemon games, I think, could mm -hmm. at least negotiate something at this point. I wouldn't be surprised if they had as well, since I think that... I can just remember, like, it was Nintendo, and I think some of the higher-ups were talking about after Sword and Shield... Not Sword and Shield, then Scarlet and Violet came out. They would be, in, like, making adjustments to either, one, improve the game, and also just for game improve the workflow going forward. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like... We don't know, like, when in 2025 the next game's coming out, but hopefully it is, like, you know, later on, so they've just got, in, like, another year, basically. Yeah, because, I mean, like, um, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, the re the remakes to, or the reboots, the remakes to uh, Diamond and Pearl were done by a different company supervised by a uh, Pokemon company, right? Yeah, like, it was, I, I forget if it's, like, Elka or ILCA. Um, yeah, they made like that One Piece RPG a few years back as well, like Odyssey. But, yeah, so I think like more um, so like nowadays, yeah. like they have the wiggle room and the money to <laughs> basically in the meantime while they work on their next like title, make some like get other companies that, to collab with to release uh, just remasters or remakes of older Pokemon games or how like yeah get uh. Also had Bandai Namco do like the new Pokemon Snap game a year or two back as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's stuff like that as well, which they do that for like the mobile, the mobile stuff as well. Just, I think, yeah, because that's definitely something as well. Because I think Game Freak's other issue is also just they're stuck in this schedule as well. And for most of that company's life, barring like some small stuff, they've been handheld developers, you know. But you know, on that schedule, it's still like a lot of work. But it's a leap, fucking leaps and bounds going from making stuff for the 3DS to making stuff for you know HD, you know, yeah, home but... consoles effectively. Yeah, the Switch. Especially on the Switch, because that's when, like, so many other Nintendo's big franchises were reinventing themselves or, you know, setting new standards with stuff like, you know, Zelda, yeah. um, Mario, Fire Emblem. Uh, Animal Crossing, Fire definitely. Emblem, Platoon. Yeah, that was after, that was a bit after, granted, but also the you know, yeah, but like, um, still. Metroid, Kirby, you know, all these other ones. So with Pokemon, it just kind of, I think with the expectations as well, you know, I don't know if you remember, like, what happened when Sword and Shield kind of revealed, like, it cutting the national decks and that, but... The, the I fucking... Like that was more so just, like, the decks and shit, The yeah. quote-unquote controversy and the, like, the... The protest that yeah. happened, yeah. 
the, but it, the shit storm basically yeah the shit was... storm <laughs> that like pretty much led nowhere because that game still sold like crazy even with a fucking uh it's the second best selling pokemon game of all time yeah so you're not wrong <laughs> <laughs> which i, I mean, think what was the best selling game bad games, yeah. which was the best selling game like gold or black and white no like no, the best-selling game is, um, weirdly enough, it's still the first games, actually. Because it counts them collectively, so it's like okay. red, blue, like red, blue, green, and yellow. But collectively, they're like about 31 million, I want to say. Yeah. Between them all. But, you know, for, they're also like late, boy, late Game Boy games as well. Because they're like 96 mm-hmm. and like 98 in the West. But yeah, like, uh, Gold and Silver, I think, were in second place for a while. Up until, like, the Switch games came out. And Black and White is like, I think it was like 15 million, I want to say. Because they were like late, they were like quite late DS games as well. Yeah. Even though they're still the best ones as well. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I do feel like yeah, like I, I I do feel like it wouldn't hurt uh like the Pokemon Company and the other companies to like come up with uh again like, even if it isn't a remaster or anything re-releasing like older ports of older games and whatnot like how like yeah because. Since, no, sorry. That's yeah, alright. Uh, like, since we are getting like uh, Pokemon Legends for uh, Kalos, I kind of feel mm-hmm. like we could get a remaster of Pokemon X and Y for like the Switch. That's potential, potentially, yeah. But honestly, I think like so, like Pokemon always has like this stream they do to make announcements on. I think it's like the franchise's birthday, so it's like February twenty seventh. I want to say, yeah. But, like, the most consistent thing people ask for is, like, them porting, like, the Game Boy games or the GBA games over to, like, the Switch's virtual consoles. Like, mm-hmm. putting Ruby and, like, putting Ruby and Sapphire or Red and Blue or that on it. Um, I don't say I'm still not... I know there's obviously the connection stuff as well, but it's... It's still weird that they've not done that because they did it for the 3DS on, like, the franchise's 20th anniversary. Like, all the Gen 1 and Gen 2 games. And for some reason, they did. They released Pokemon Stadium on the N sixty four onto that. Which, if you don't like, if you don't know if you know, but like the main thing for those games is that they let you connect up to the Game Boy games and transfer your Pokemon in to like do mini games and go through like all the battles and that in um, Stadium's story mode and that. <laughs> so basically, the games are missing like a massive chunk of what you can do because for some reason the Game Boy games aren't available on the Switches online as well. Hmm. All right, go figure, go figure. I guess, but. I don't know, maybe they... I'm not really... I mean, granted, for Gen 1 as well, they also did kind of get... They also did get remade as well. Um, there's, like, the Let's Go games, which are just, you know... They're kind of like Pokemon Go. They take, like, a lot of the mechanics from Pokemon Go and just remake Gen 1 with that. So, like, you know, red and blue in that. Yeah. Which, I don't know. Like, um, I'm here or there on what they did with, uh, like, the specific mechanics to Let's Go. It's kind of here or there. I'm, I, yeah, I, it's I, a thing, like... It's fine, honestly. Yeah, it's a fine game. Just yeah, I- I'm fine with them. Like it just being just that specific, uh, like bundle of games. Like I- I'm fine with it being that, but it's just like that going as the staple f- throughout the year. Se- going for, I'm just like nah. I feel like that's like you're uh, you're taking away a lot of what people like about Pokemon's gameplay. Yeah, which granted they they pretty much are just at this point they are pretty much just a one and done because yeah. Like sword and Sh- like sword and shield, um, legends Arceus and all that. The only thing they took across was like, for some reason, the one thing they said to bring across was let's get rid of the option to just basically turn off the exp share so that you can't just have like one Pokemon game experience and not the whole party. Yeah, let's just make the game Notice easier. That, honestly, it do- honestly, you'd you'd be surprised because if you try going through like Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl with that, that's a game that wasn't designed. That's basically like a copy of Diamond and Pearl, and those games weren't designed with like all of your Pokemon being at the exact same level. Mm-hmm. So it does kind of nullify all of that game does to try and, like, you know, improve things by making, like, the gem leader teams harder or giving them, you know, different yeah. items and strategies not to use. Yeah, and I, I don't remember when it was introduced, but definitely, like, I feel EXP share was uh, a little more prominent with X and Y. Like, it was when... Yeah. It was, it was at least around when they were starting to do it, and it was very much a case of, mm-hmm. like, yeah, if you if you want to do it, you can turn it on, or you can keep it off. Yeah, and I still don't know why the fuck they took it away, honestly, because it's not like it's a major gameplay shift or anything like that. You know, it's no, not it's like... Ju- it's just... It's do you... have the Pokedex. That was just a matter of, like, time and budget and that, but it's yeah. literally a thing in the fucking options that you can just turn on and off. 
Because that's what it was like in the fucking Gen 6 and Gen 7 games. Yeah. It literally is just like, hey, do you want to make the game, like, a little harder on yourself? Okay, here you go. If you do you not, all right, we'll turn it back on. Yeah. Or hell, do you want to just cut down on grinding in that if you're, you know, at a difficult gem or you're just, you know, it's the post game or whatever, or you're getting ready for the champion for the final boss yeah, or whatever. Like, it's, like, having it as an option, I'm fine with, but having it, like, yeah, no, I'm, no, mandatory yeah. or forced upon the players, that's where I'm like, nah. Yeah, like, and I will say that it does, I will say that Scarlet and Violet and Legends Arceus especially do kind of feel like they're bounced around it because Legends' entire gameplay style is, you know, just based around you catching a shit ton of Pokemon, so you're going to be switching them out regardless. Yeah, it's basically and, like Breath of the Wild meets Dark Souls. Meets Pokemon. I mean, I, I, mean, I guess kind of. Um, I'm trying to think of like, <laughs> that's a way to describe it, I suppose. Well, Try I guess to... Breath of the Wild is kind of. I guess Breath of the Wild is more like Scarlet and Violet, just because that's like a completely open world game, you know, performance aside. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of what that one is closest to, actually. Fuck, I'm actually not sure. Um, it's kind of like. Cause it obviously has like stealth as a part of it as well, since obviously, you know, it's based around like sneaking up on Pokemon as well to catch them off guard. That's a part of it, but. Yeah, still, I don't know. I'm trying to. I'm blanking. I'm blanking what it's like, but. Um. I don't know, I think, like, the worst for it is somewhat Sword and Shield and, like, Scarlet and Violet, not Scarlet and Violet, fucking um, BDSP, the Gen 4 remakes. I just call it BDSM, dude. <laughs> brilliant Diamond, Brilliant Diamond, Sun and Moon. <laughs> sure. I mean, you joke with that, but, well, bear in mind, the subtitles for that are S and M. So you've got Pokemon S and M there, you, you can do the math with that. I actually had a talk with someone. Yeah. I actually, I remember who I had to talk with this about, but it was like <laughs> they were so confused as to like, uh, oh man, I don't understand why we can't just go with SS for Sword and Shield. And it was just like, really, <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not wouldn't be the best one to be frank. <laughs> it came for Japan. They have a bit of an interesting relationship with the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> with those two letters. <laughs> plus, plus, let's face it, there's a much more optimal reason. Why would you just say those two letters when you can call it Pokemon Swish? Mm -hmm. Like, well, that's, not, that's swish, just fun swish. to say. Let's be frank. Swish, swish. <laughs> swish. <laughs> swish, swish, step. Swish, tish, swish, tea. Come on for that bush, tea. Yeah, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I don't know. I guess, like, were you ever, like, a massive Pokemon player or that? Or is it just kind of, yeah, casually just playing some of the games uh, sporadically, basically? I used to be a big-time, like, Pokemon player. Like, I got my start with red and blue and yellow, and then it moved on to mm -hmm. gold and silver, and so on and so forth. Like, I used to have games. And then my mom threw all the fucking games out for some reason, and then basically uh, after Legends Arceus, is just, or honestly, after Sword and Shield, I became more casual with the games. Yeah, I think everyone was kind of... I think a lot of people are like that as well. You know, they didn't get into, like, competitively with that because, you know, that's a big part of Pokemon's scene as well. Yeah. And honestly, like, her getting rid of the games as well kind of stings doubly because, well, you've seen the fucking prices they go for on, like, online nowadays. Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, yeah. absolutely. fucking -lutely. If you had, like, a legit card of, like, Emerald or Platinum or Heart Gold especially, you know, that's, like, a few hundred bu bucks right there. Yeah, like... Legit, I it it got to the point where it was just like basically I was like emu I like I remember as a kid just emulating like older Pokemon games just on my phone. Yeah, I mean, I mean, fair enough. You know, you did own them. You didn't. You didn't choose to get rid of them. Yeah. Unless. <laughs> but yeah, though. So. I don't know. Like I was, yeah. Like I've always kind of. I can. I think I got into Pokemon like about. Um, Gen 3, I want to say, so that's like 2005, 2006. Mm -hmm. But like, just a lot, which really enough was a lot of spin offs initially. Like, it wasn't, I didn't play like a mainline one to like Heart Gold, I want to say. Like, so that was like 2010. Yeah. So yeah, played the spin offs, played some of the main games, kind of stopped after Black and White 2 came out, just decided, just kind of decided, no, I'm too old for this now. I need to stop playing Pokemon. 
Then I kind of then I went for that for like two and a half years. Saw like X and Y and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Saw a copy of Y in like a used game shop for like thirty bucks, I want to say, or twenty nine pounds or whatever. Oh, nice. And then just decided. Then I just decided. Oh, fuck that! Oh, fuck this! I just want to play. Fuck this! I just want to play this game. <laughs> so I just bought it and haven't looked back for the most part since then. Hmm. Okay. It was also kind of also kind of funny because my Y team was like probably the most overpowered one that I've ever used going through a main lane game. What was the team? Because obviously you know, well I had Grin, well I had Pick Greninja, which is like most people think is say is like the best star in that game. You know, yeah. just in terms of its abilities. Uh, Talonflame, which is you know just yep pretty damn useful on that side. Mm -hmm. Aegislash. Yep. Aegislash. <laughs> and then the fucking two mega, then the two mega Pokemon and the Garchomp as well. Why not? You know, at that point I figured. <laughs> I was just kind of picking it because I hadn't used it before. So yeah, kind of by accident, I kind of made a very busted, overpowered team. Yeah, I think for the most <laughs> the part, Pokemon like, <laughs> anybody who played Y was kind of like that as well. Yeah, because, well, I mean, they literally give you, like, half of those Pokemon as well. Yeah. Literally, because you get, like, the Mega, the Kanto starter, and uh, you, obviously your own starter as well. Yeah. Yeah, but, I don't know, like, Y is fine. Y is, like, fine enough as a game, but... Yeah, I do wonder. I think like part of the reason they don't bring it back is just because typically when they do that, it's either going to get a remake or yeah, it's going to have it's going to have to get a remake because like un unless you want to like play the fucking th play the game with the 3ds split screen, just go full I mean, on emulation on it. I mean that's just something they want to do it in that side as well, just because. I do wonder if, like, the reception to BDSP kind of made them reconsider just remaking the games on that side, you know, unless they've got, like, a good reason to do it, because, like, the main criticism to be that the Gen 4 remakes got was the fact it was basically just, there was, like, so little done to, like, try and improve them from the original games. Like, you know, it basically was just, like, Diamond and Pearl again, but with 3D models and, like, some updated stuff, but, like, you know, didn't really take advantage of it being a remake like any of the other ones did, so yeah. that's where... And I think, like, the criticism on that side was... It kind of feels like that game kind of died off the quickest of all the Pokemon games. Um, I, it kind of feels, I, yeah. feels that way. I mean, it still sold really damn well, but I don't know. I think, like, then again, it could also just be, like, the team on that side wanting to do something original as well, you know? Because apparently, like, the main crux of it is that it's all set in, like, one city, effectively, like kind of like, I guess, a Yakuza game or something, where it's just, like, one mm -hmm. large city where there's a ton of stuff to do. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on that side, but, uh... I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm just talking. I don't know. I kind of just... Pokemon kind of gets you talking, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would honestly say, like, with, uh... Brewing Diamond Chain Pearl, yeah, I think it's... I don't know. It's, like... I think the gen is fine, but in comparison to what we got and even what we would eventually get, I I, I do think it's sort of the most like kind of middle of the road esque like gen in mm -hmm. my opinion, mainly because of how honestly kind of uh, boring it is at times with like just building teams because it's basically like it just. The us uh, there's like one standard team you can make with some of the Pokemon you can get at the start and everything, and then pretty much that team for the majority of the entire game can just beat everything. Like I think uh, Shinx yeah. pretty much just caps everything. Yeah, it's like your starter, which for one ends up being Staraptor, Luxray, uh, probably like probably like I guess. Weasel, like Weasel, probably like the next one, or Gaston yeah, Weasel. Or whatever. I would say so. Uh, I'm to think. Yeah, like I'm trying to think of the other ones. Probably like Legendary if it's like your first time through for most people, and maybe like Garchomp as well because you can get that. Actually, yeah. Can you get that one pretty early in that? I'm not sure. And granted, like to give it like a point in its favor, they did like give away for you to get other Pokemon at least that weren't in the original version of it. You know, there's like the whole underground bit, so you can get like yeah. some stuff that was like other Pokemon like Houndoom and Altaria and that and Togepi. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, well, that's what I did when I played through it, so I'd hope so. <laughs> nah, though, but, um, I think, like, the fact that, like, they use so little stuff from, Plat from like, Pokemon Platinum in particular, because here's the thing, like, Crystal, it's, like, 
um, Heart Gold and Soul Silver brought some stuff in from like its third version, Crystal. Yeah. And Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire kind of did that with Emerald, but it was kind of also, you know, doing a lot of its own thing as well. You know, just stuff that was unique to that game, which is, you know, perfectly fine. I'd say if you're going to do like a remake, that's like, those are like the two ways to go about it. But Platinum itself is such a massive improvement over like regular Diamond and Pearl when it comes to just being a good Pokemon game that the fact they didn't do anything with it as well, I think, you know, just it's kind of like a what is the point kind of situation, you know? Yeah. Like the only reason that you'd play with the others is just legitimately it's just because the battles tend to go faster just because, you know, it doesn't have the health bar taking 10 minutes to empty out. <laughs> And I guess the music as well, because honestly, the sound, the remastered soundtrack is pretty damn good as well. Yeah, it actually is. At least in my opinion. <laughs> but yeah, though. Uh, anyway, there's other video games that exist as well. Do you, <laughs> that you want to talk about? <laughs> I mean, we can talk about Pokemon for a real... We, we, we can make this the one where we talk about Pokemon for a long time. <laughs> We talk about so part one. We talk about Nazis. Part two, we round up <laughs> more. <laughs> uh, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. If you want to go with that, I'm fine going with that. Yeah. Uh, all right. You can uh, I'll let you pick a. I'll uh, pick a topic then. All right. Um, <laughs> honestly, I would love to see Pokemon Tournament come back. Yeah, good point. Actually, like I hear, like a, I guess like either a sequel or like another remastered port of it or something. Yeah, because there's like there's so many Pokemon you can like legitimately pick a handful of them and then base them off of like Tekken characters. It'd be fine. Yeah, exactly. Like, because like what was what was like the final roster for that it was like twenty oh, it, or something. It, it was Shadow Mewtwo. Yeah, like, I know there was like some after as well. There was like um, it that's yeah, there was, like a few more in, like the Switch version. Oh yeah, it was um the well like legitimately they they made um I mean initially it came out for the Wii U, um and then yeah the Wii U didn't arcades it, as well yeah yeah arcades as well, and then the Wii U sort of stuck getting supported by uh, Nintendo and because then they virtue, then they made the Switch the and then they the were like being the Wii U <laughs> yeah and then they just made Pokemon Tournament <laughs> DX, and the most that happened outside of fighting Shadow Mewtwo was you pretty much just went into the uh like the the like the Pokemon fighting tournament the league and then the game ended that was pretty much it like the big story around uh like the big story was around Shooter. yeah the the mix, big story was around Shadow Mewtwo and that was kind of it there wasn't really much else after that yeah what yeah, like, I mean, it's, you know, it's a fight, if it being a fighting game, I imagine, like, the gameplay was more of the focus on that side, but... Yeah. I get what you mean, though, as well. Also, like, this is kind of off-topic, but doesn't, like, Pokken have, like, a really bad English dub as well? Yeah. Or, like, yeah. Like, like, I, really the, 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 I think the, one of the only voices in it is the narrator, and she is kind of just like, all right, well, we're dangling the money in front of you, just voice the character. And you will hear her not really, <laughs> you'll hear her try, but not really, like, give a good performance. Like, there will be lines like, something is in the way. Wow, it's, incredible. Basically, it's just like. <laughs> yeah, but, it's like, yeah. honestly, is it like, okay, do you know fucking Chaos Wars? Like that one, yeah. like the dub in that game, is it kind of like that kind of vibe? I've just not really given much of a damn. I guess? I... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> do, you, do you know, okay, you don't know what Chaos Wars is, do you? <laughs> I know what Chaos Wars is. It's just like, okay, I'm, try like... I'm, tr I'm trying to envision it in my head. Okay, it's like, there's like that one fucking clip of, uh, there's... The main villain who's speaking like very quietly. There's the main character, there's the main hero, I'm guessing, who sounds like a very sassy, flamboyant man. Like, wow, I really can't move my body. And then a lady who just sounds really fucking bored and half asleep. I honestly kind of like that, yeah. Ah, yeah, fair enough. Um, honestly, all I know about like Pokin's English dub is that uh, one of the characters was voiced by the main villain from Yakuza 3. Like in the English dub, because there's like one character in that game that is just voice in English in all languages. And it is very weird. 
I don't know, there's like a character named, I think his name's Glenn or whatever, apparently, just according to IMDB, so, eh, I, I don't know. I really only heard one voice in, uh, like, I only really heard one I mean, voice in Pokken, and it was like the announcer. I mean, fair enough, maybe it's just like, it could be a case where it's just like voice grunts in that, or... Maybe. Um, like, like just, you know, like, yeah, okay, oh no, you know, just stuff like that whenever, like, random stuff happens in the story, or just... Or text boxes or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, though. Um, honestly, yeah, because outside of Pokemon, outside of like Pokemon tournament, most of the spinoffs in that have kind of been more or less like on the mobile side, or like start off on mobile and get ported to Switch after. Because you know, there's like Pokemon. Obviously, like there's trading card game. There's Pokemon Unite and Pokemon Go. Those are like the main ones. And like, I guess Pokemon Sleep as well, if you count that. Mystery Dungeon as well. Yeah. That's like, to be fair, that was a remake as well. But yeah, that's like, yeah, kind of the one-off there, and yeah, and Pokemon Snap as well, actually. So there's like two there, but they're like a lot less frequent than they were like during the two thousands. Yeah, probably guess by virtue of they came out on consoles that have now been replaced by smartphones and smart devices and that. But honestly, yeah, like I'd love to see. Like honestly, I think people are kind of really hoping for like a remake of, I think like Explorers of Time and Darkness. Yeah, I would love to have that because those. Are, yeah, because they're like the fan favorite. They're like the fan favorite of the Mystery Dungeon games, right? Yeah. Yeah, like um, and yeah, like I've, I think I remember the story for the. I remember them as well. It's I'd like to see that. Never been a massive. Never been like a massive Mystery they're, Dungeon fan. Like I think I remember the most. I know, I most noteworthy thing was like there was a coughing and a Viper that were absolutely like the fucking villains, and they were trying to like prevent you from like going on this big uh like hunt i think that was like the first thing that happens in the story to be fair it takes story, like, it no, takes no. a it takes a good chunk of the story actually like i got pretty damn far fair enough. last yeah. time i played i got pretty damn far in the game like to the point where sure? I, my riolu hmm. was actually learning like st moves like aura palm are you sure you're not thinking of like the first like red Rescue team in that because i think there was like a coffee and gengar can I say kicks in that as well? I know. I, I do like, rem I do remember what, there was a Gengar. I, I it might have Yeah. Cause like no no Explorers of Time and Darkness' story goes a lot of places. <laughs> like do you know okay, do you know like um the plot for those is like kind of weird, kind of like unhinged in the best way possible, like in kind of like that Sonic Adventure way or like Sonic 06 way, you know, just kind of delightfully unhinged, but it all kind of works yeah. as well just because of, you know, how it works in the story. Yeah. Plus, honestly, I think... You know how many people would be happy to hear, like, a, rem a remaster of, like, Dialga's Fight to the Finish? Like, the final boss theme? Mm hmm A lot of people. That's who would be happy to hear that. Yeah. Also me. I am a lot of people. <laughs> but yeah, though... Some people uh... would be... Some people would be interested into it. And some people would also be Scottish. And me. I am part of some people. We are legion, so give us so give us the game, you cowards! I will buy give it. Give some people the game, you c give some people, and some people won't have to fucking pull the trigger. For the love of God, if you make if you just either that or Pokemon Ranger game again, I will buy it. <laughs> just please let me give you my let me give you my money, please. Just give me the damn money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, did you ever play like Pokemon Ranger actually when that was out? Once. Once, do you remember which one it was? Oh god, that was so long ago. I think it was around the time when they made uh, the anime focus on it. So that could have been any of them, really. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. <then. laughs> you have the slightest uh, idea how little that narrows it down. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess to be fair, like um, two of them play pretty damn similarly as well. So you know. You could have been playing one or the other and just been thinking it's one or the other. Honestly, I kind of have like a weird I kind of have like a weird story from like the first game of mm -hmm. it because I kind of mentioned that like I played some of the spin-offs first from like the Gen 3 era when those were like my first Pokemon games. And it was like uh, Blue Rescue Team and the first Pokemon Ranger were like the main ones. Mm -hmm. And bear and I got that copy of it like brand basically it was like a brand new one. Yeah. First off, for some reason it was an American copy not a European one. <laughs> so, like, it's got the, like, the skinnier black boxes that DS games have in America. Mm -hmm. So, didn't realize that until, like, years later. <laughs> but, 
one other thing with it is that they had like special bonus missions you could do after beating the game and one of them was that if you beat the game and then basically did that mission it let you it basically gave you an egg that you hatch and transfer a mana fate into like one of the gen 4 games and mm -hmm. i didn't realize that mines was still like an active one on there until like years afterwards so yeah went through beat it transferred it through so by complete fucking happenstance, I got, <laughs> I got, all I got a mythical on that one because, basically, because like the other thing with it is that once you redeem on that side, that's it gone. You can't get any more. So, hmm. basically, I got a mythical Pokemon on that side by complete fucking luck. <laughs> oh, just because I happened to own the game from when it came out, I didn't realize what it had until like a decade later. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Just kind of funny. And it's kind of fun. It sounds funny to me. If you don't think it's funny, then. I get it. Be I ain't laughing, but funny. I Be get it. <laughs> I ain't laughing, it's funny, but I get it. More funny. Uh, okay, Mr. Funny Man, what's your funny Pokemon story? I got one. <laughs> uh, so, I had recently gotten into um, Pokemon Infinite Fusion, which is the fan-made game. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, and they have... Uh, they. It's really cool, because they have like a randomizer option where it's just like you can encounter... Uh, like fusions of different kinds like i will counter like a fucking blaziken mixed with a dialga like it's fucking sick and like i had this one more where it's just like i wasn't really paying attention to what i said and then i just set like every like reward pokemon be randomized and then they had this one moment in the game where it's a full-on call out to like legend of zelda where it's just like it's dangerous to go alone take this in game it's supposed to be the only, like, uh, Bisharp you can get in the game, or, uh, not the, Honedge, sorry. Honedge, yeah. Yeah, Honedge. It's the only Honedge you can get in the game, and I got fucking Bidoof instead. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, I, wait, how do I get it? It's like, I, oh, you can't, there's the only one. It's like, oh, fuck, I guess I gotta start all over again, don't I? <laughs> uh... To be fair, now I do, I do have the wonderful image in my head now of Badoof holding, holding like, Hornage in his mouth like it's fucking Seth from Dark Souls. <laughs> Badoof just basically like, wielding it like a fucking sword in his mouth. Play the fucking uh, Elden Ring theme? Yeah, like, that's the one. Like, the really sad one. <laughs> oh, I was thinking the uh, ho <laughs> nah, that's just Nah, that's just a Halo theme, mate. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, though. I'm trying to think, guys. I think of something else. I was thinking of something there for a second, but I don't know. I guess like okay. I guess like the main question. I know you don't play them. I know you've played them just sporadically, but uh, your favorite Pokemon game, if you had to name one, X. Anyway, X and Y. X. Oh, all right. Fair enough then. Uh, I guess like any particular. Fair enough. Just don't hear that one too much then. Uh. I don't know, just any particular reason, or is it just because the game is... you like them the best? Um, I mean... Even if it wasn't, I mean, like... Even if I did... didn't have one, I mean, ultimately, uh... Yeah, I would just say I like it the most. But, I mean, if you want a reason... I mean, like, I have most, uh... Like, fond memories with my brother and my friends and all that with X and Y. And also, like, there was just, like... that. There was also that event with, uh... They they were giving out like mythical myth uh myths and legendaries once per month. Oh yeah, like, yeah. I think it was like for the anniversary or like the yeah, anniversary. which they which they haven't done since, and that pisses me off. I know. Yeah, I guess like, maybe for the thirtieth anniversary they might do something, but no, that's fair enough. Then honestly, you could have just said like it's my favorite because it's the one I like the most, and yeah. You know.